Hey everyone, I'm Batekia and welcome to this week's video. Hello everyone, for this week I wanted to show you how I render hair in my illustrations. Now, I don't know if you guys know, but when I render hair, it tends to be very detailed, very diverse in colors, and I like the way it looks all flowy and stuff. Now, I have a specific process for this. It's not exactly a perfect step-by-step, -step. it's more of a general one. Nonetheless, I hope you find this helpful. Here, I have the portrait that I'm going to be using for this tutorial. I already have the face rendered, the hands, the shirt, etc everything except the hair. Now when I render hair, the main brushes I use are the Kyle Ultimate Thick and Thin brush, sizes 25, 11, and 6, give or take a few pixels. I also use the Soft Round Pressure Opacity brush, the Round Pressure Opacity brush, and the Hard Round Pressure Size brush. As you can tell, most of these are general Photoshop default brushes. I never found any other brushes that I liked, I just taught myself how to draw using the default brushes. For the base of the hair, of course, I place the main color. For this drawing, it's brown. And then I map out the lighting and shadows. Here are the colors that I'm using for that, well, generally the colors I'm using. For mapping, I like to use a lasso tool so my colors are placed exactly where I want them. Plus, I can use the gradient tool to give it that airbrush effect. First, I do the shadows. Now, I didn't like how bright it was compared to the brown base color, so I duplicated the layer that I was using to add the shadows. I changed the effects of both layers, the top layer being multiply and the bottom layer being a lighter color, and it gives this brightening effect. I don't always do that, but this time I thought I'd explain what I did. Then I add the lighting. Once I've mapped them out, I start to render. Usually I use the soft round pressure opacity brush to just blend the colors that I need blended together so it doesn't look too rough. Once I finish using the soft round pressure opacity brush, I like to go ahead and use the round pressure opacity brush to blend any colors in a way where it gives texture, like this example here. Now once that's finished, I go and grab the Kyle Ultimate Thick and Thin brushes and reference the line art layer to add the hair locks that show it overlapping each other. So I kind of use this to clean up the airbrush layer. I use the colors in the palette given to me. I try not to pick up any other colors because then it kind of becomes a mess, but if you need to, you could always do that.
and here's the final result. Comparing before and after, you can really see that you gotta trust the process. <laughs> it's all about, you know, layering, blending the colors first, and then going with the hard brush to give it texture. I hope you guys found this week's video helpful. Let me know if you found it helpful, and if you guys want more tutorial videos, let me know of what. I can do anatomy, I can do more coloring, more rendering, I can do picking colors, anything. I'm more than happy to share with you guys my processes for everything. And with that, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye now.